Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Door Controls Signature 30 Series Overhead Concealed Door Closers. First of all, the Signature 30 Series is a fixed spring model. Uh, there's a light spring and a medium spring. If you want an adjustable spring model, you're going to want the Signature 50 Series, which will allow you to get into handicap compliance with a reduced opening force of five pound range, and of course the ability to tailor the spring tension, whereas the 30 series are two spring tensions, light or medium. Light is for doors up to 30 inch. Medium is for doors greater than 30 up to about 42 inch. Two spring models. There are two versions of hold open, which will be your non-hold open and your uh, hold open, there'll be two degrees, 90 degree and 105 degree. That will give you eight different models. So you've got a light spring, 105 degree hold open, that's the 3020. 105 degree non-hold open is the 21. Uh, 90 degree hold open is the 22. Last two digits. Uh, 90 degree non-hold open is the 23. You change the two in that part number two or three and then you'll have the medium spring. The DC3030 is a 105 degree hold open. The 3031 is a 105 degree non hold open. The 3032 is a 90 degree hold open. 3033 is the uh, non hold open 90 degree. Those are going to be the four uh, the eight models that you'll have. This is going to be a complete door closer in the sense that you're going to get a closer body, you're going to get the mounting brackets for the top. You're going to get the uh, top arm, you're going to get the bottom arm, and then the floor portion will all be included with that. The overview of the 3030, it's a uh, door closer that, constru that is intended for wood, uh, hollow metal, aluminum installations. Uh, a, a, a closer like this will be used because you are looking for a concealed type look door closer. These are inherently center hung, that means that the vertical axis of pivoting is down in the center of the door itself. Okay, uh, so you don't, as a result, you're reducing significantly the amount of exposed hardware when you have a center hung opening. UL listed, dual and single acting. These are inherently double acting. They will allow the door to swing in and out. If you want it to be single acting, you'll simply have to install it in such a way where you've got some stops applied to prevent that door from going any further. Positive centering for alignment. Uh, you'll be able to expect this closer to find center. You can adjust it, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. Cast iron body. Some people will argue that a cast iron body is superior to aluminum, and I believe that there's some research and science that bears that out. A lot of people like it just because it's heavy. It's heavy. It's like, oh, that must be good. It's heavy. Um, that's not always a good thing when you've got heavy hardware. It does complicate the weight of the door ultimately and therefore the door closers ability to efficiently close the door I suppose um, and well there are, will obviously be installations where uh, having the weight understood as best as possible is really important you might have a ship uh, you might have an airplane uh, knowing the precise weight of everything, cast iron, aluminum, might be important in lots of installations. Flat head adjustment valves for closing and latching speeds, also known as the sweep and latch valves. You can pause this video and study that. The one valve at the top, even though you can see a number two stamp there, not sure why that's there. Might just simply mean there's two valves that are on this closer. And of course there's the warning that is there as well. These are not staked valves, meaning there's no tamping or staking that's been done on the valves and you are not to exceed two full turns in either direction, otherwise you'll compromise the integrity of the door closer uh, to work at all. So keep that in mind. As I had said earlier, you're going to get mounting brackets and the half inch spindle length is normal, typical, and common on such a door closer. Okay, We talked about the models, hold open, the degree. This is going to include inherently a side load arm 
but there is a link below this video to a document called Cut Sheet that will allow you to review the other ARM packages that are available for this. There's a, um, end a couple of different end load ARMs, a couple of slide tracks that would be there as well uh, if you were doing a single acting door. <clears throat> bottom pivot packages, there's variations that are available. Those would be simply purchased separately is how that would ultimately end up working. So perhaps review those top arm and bottom arm uh, variations uh, so that you are sure that you're ordering the right uh, total package that you'll need. Now the second link that's below this video is to the installation instructions and that's a fairly uh, straightforward document, fairly I mean. Um, it's all there. I suggest if you're doing a new installation, if you're replacing, uh, you know, probably just move forward visually. You can see what has to happen, make it, ha make it happen. If you're doing a new installation, especially one that's going to require uh, making this work, like if you had a wood header, I've installed these on wood headers and there's no provision for a cover plate here, even though they give you a couple of screws for a cover plate. You're going to need to think through uh, very carefully how you're going to go about installing this uh, if you're doing a new installation, meaning the header has to be prepped, drilled, tapped, and reinforced, uh, dimensionally correct to make this all work. A new installation requires a reality check on everything. Start at step one and compare the line drawings that you see to the parts that you've received to your expectations of how you'll proceed. Certainly the person who wrote this, their first language was not English. Um, there are words that don't make sense, there are things that contradict each other, there are misspellings, and there are parts here that I don't know what you do with them. So lay all the pieces out, but in summary you're going to get Initially, the F bracket, that's going to be really where this all starts. Now, the F bracket Now the F bracket is what's going to be mounted to the hinge jam and to the underside of the header that you are then going to take the door closer body vers uh, uh, via these two mounting tabs. And get this installed up and like this. And that's just going to rest there. Okay. You're going to get some screws, a couple of small flathead machine screws, to mount this from the top side of the header. You'll get three panhead machine screws to go here, here, and here. You'll get a couple of large flathead machine screws, which I don't show as going into these two holes that are here, I suppose you could add some. You're going to get two trim head bolts that will mount uh, down below in these slotted holes up into the machined mounting tabs or the tapped mounting tabs of the closer body. There will be a bunch of star washers and I would use them wherever you could. You're going to get two flat head quarter 20 bolts and nuts to go with those so that you can mount the angle bracket from the top side of the header and bolt it there. You'll get two hex cap screws for going to, through these holes and that will go into and secure the body right into the tapped holes in the end of the cylinder. Okay. Now I've at that point I've got some pieces left over that you know I've got everything secured um, nice and tight and I don't know what a couple of these items are for some hex cap screws, uh, pardon me, some, some nuts. They even give you a couple of machine screws that you'll use to mount a closer plate down into the F clip that's here, into those two last tapped holes. Okay, That will get you everything installed and that's all visually shown on page one of the installation instructions but it's also uh, discussed verbally and that's where the you know, needing to take your time. Take the 10 minutes and fully study it to be sure that you're uh, proceeding accurately. Now, page two of the installation instructions is a whole lot of dimensions. It's not really a big deal because when you're installing things like this, what I have learned is that the, the 
cornerstone of installation is always the vertical axis of pivoting. What's that being dimensioned off of? That's the most important dimension, I think. That's the center line of the spindle, a plumb bob, imagine a plumb bob, all the way down to the very center line of the floor plate. Okay, That is the vertical axis of pivoting. The page two of the installation instruction calls that dimension out at two and five eighths, right there, from the edge of the door. You can see next to it is 0.12. That's an eighth of an inch margin, but clearly they're counting on the fact that you're going to have a radius door edge at the tip of my finger. If you've got a double acting door, you'll need that to be radiused. Um, if you have a single acting door, you'll need it to be radius to achieve that tight margin because this is at the end of the day what this is is a uh, center hung closer and center hung closers uh, center hung hardware require either a radius because imagine if my door that's probably about the right dimension right a square edge door would be my fist imagine the margin I'd need to have between the edge of the door and the frame to allow a square edged piece of hardware to uh, a square edge door that's why they will round that over so that you can achieve that eighth of an inch margin now if you don't have a radius door I think that a center hung closer is not possibly the best option or you need to increase that dimension to at least a quarter inch or maybe five sixteenths to account for that square edge detail so be mindful of that they're already figuring on having a radius edge door the rest of the dimensions on page two uh, are really important um, but you're always going to want to do you know the location of the holes here and here you're always going to want to do a reality check literally take the installation instructions lay them down and put a tape measure on the door closer body it's very infrequent that a template is wrong very infrequent it's not unheard of that a design change happens on a piece of hardware and the paperwork is still the old paperwork. That's not unheard of. Um, but then very, very occasionally there's just simply a dimensional uh, error. Maybe not just a dimensional error, but also the possibility of you just doing it wrong. So you know the old axiom, measure twice, cut once obviously when you're doing a closer like this. The good thing about this hardware though is when you get that F bracket to the jam, your dimension's already determined because that closer body is going to fit right here and be done with it. Okay, this It's not going to move. It's going to be flush to the header. That's going to be maintained, that 2 and 5 eighths from the end of the door. Um, it does talk about the holes, those locations, for the top arm, and let's look at the top arm. This is a side load arm, meaning the access, access to attaching the arm to the spindle is from the side, not the end. There's end load arms and then there's side load arms. A side load arm would be very appropriate for a wood door installation uh, because you need to notch the door somewhere to get the door on the bottom pivot and then tipped in. If you do an end load, you'll put the door at 90 degrees, get it on the bottom pivot and then tip it up. So an aluminum door or a steel door would be great for an end load, but generally mortising a wood door with a big notch in the end and leaving a very thin wall of veneer is not the idea. So you would side load a wood door. It's going to give you the uh, installation instructions. We'll give you the hole size for the, what you're going to need to drill and tap for this bolt and for this bolt. Uh, this bolt first, that's going to be this flathead washer, this washer and the flathead screw. The You've got this real funny bolt that's here. I think it's like a half of an inch bolt. Then you've got this trim head machine screw. So you're going to get this drilled and tapped down to the top of the door. That's going to set over it. Then what happens is this bolt goes through the end here and fits into the hole, the tapped hole that's in the head of that bolt. Now 
that's going to allow the arm to more securely stay attached. So this bolt's tapped down to the top of the door. This is locking that assembly to the end of the arm. So you're not relying only on the how tight the screws are of the mounting block once the, it's over the shaft. You've got some screws that are here, three of them, and you'll have these real funny uh, countersunk star washers, and that's all going to go in right like that. There's thread lock on those, so you'll know which screw is correct to go there. The last, well, the last screws that will attach to the arm will be these hex cap bolts. You're going to put one here. You're going to put one down here, and then you can turn these two bolts to fill the inside inverted top channel of the door. And that's going to allow you to take and put this onto, or, or to set the arm askew, or give it some cant either way, to account for a door closure body that's not exactly straight. Maybe uh, something funny about the frame and relationship of the door. Maybe to adjust for a door that's got a real funny twist on it. So those two bolts, as you loosen one and tighten the other, will allow you to draw that door in and out ever so slightly. The last thing you're going to get, because you're notching the face of the door for a uh, side load arm, is a plate and a couple of tiny machine screws. You'll notch the door on the inside. You don't want to have someone walk up with a tiny screwdriver and just remove your plate and then get access to those three bolts and allow that door closure to, or allow that door to be tipped inward. So put that on the inside of the opening, that notch. Okay. Uh, there are more dimensions on page two of the installation instructions, but they're elementary in the sense that, uh, again, review them, reality check them, lay them out, understand them, be comfortable with them. And real, realistically, the first time you do a concealed closer, the second one's going to take you one-third of the time, if that. Page three of the installation instructions are really an overview of everything that's occurred, except that they give you some actual dimensions of what to drill and tap the hole for, especially the top arm. And you can see an overview of what that looks like. That cover plate's going to be a part of your aluminum frame construction. Then all the preparation that you're going to do on the top side of the header will all be listed there as well. We're going to show you what's being done on that top jam installation. The language that's down in the lower right hand corner just verbally describes drilling, attaching, tap tapping holes. Uh, the last page is elementary. You've got your latching valve, which is valve two. Yes, valve two uh, indicated here. Again, latch, uh, yes, valve two. Uh, latching is zero to 15 degree, okay? Your sweep valve is from 15 out to 90 or 105, about 90. You're going to want to install the door closer with making no adjustments, and then test the door, make minor adjustments, cycle it a handful of times, to let equilibrium of oil find balance, operate the door, and then continue to adjust until it works exactly how you want it. Uh, and that is really page four. You know, clockwise to, to increase the amount of time it takes to slow it down. Counterclockwise, think of it as opening up a valve on a, on a hose counterclockwise to let more fluid through, and that's exactly what's happening. Um, now, what we've not discussed are the bottom portion. You've got the floor plate here, and this will be for a, an inverted, a one-inch inverted bottom cavity. You've got the uh, female portion that's going to sit on top of the floor portion. You've got this bolt that's connected to this block, and you can adjust this by tightening or loosening this block to draw that, the bolt to draw that tapered block in and out to compensate for some door height. All of the dimensions are laid out where you're going to put this, but again, that 2 and 5 eighths has to come right down through the center of that area. 
Okay, you've got a couple of slotted holes, and that's what you're going to use first and make any sort of lateral adjustment on the bottom. Once you know you're in good shape, drill and tap these other two holes, and screws are provided for all of that to then permanently secure it. But then you've got your floor portion, and you've got uh, wood and machine screws for this. Much well, a machine screw would be great if you had a lead lead anchor. Although. The, lead the uh, screws may not be long enough for a lead anchor. You might need to switch those out. Um, a, f a threshold can come over this if you're going to drill that hole. This goes down. Threshold comes down. You're in good shape. You'll drill a hole through the end of the door for access to that bolt. Okay, really simple. These are generally double acting. Um, Double, you know, center hung door closers for single acting. The only time you're doing that is when it's paramount that you have concealed hardware, uh, even though there's downsides to having center acting hardware, such as the treatment to the edge of the door, such as also the um, fact that if you have a wood door, there's no hinges or pivots in the middle of that door helping keep it from warping. That's a downside, certainly, uh, most especially from the perspective of the door manufacturer who will not give a warranty on an installation because they'll consider that improperly hung. The balance of the uh, information we've covered, we've talked about, and you can't see them all on my desk, but all the pieces that are laid out here. The name door controls is quite synonymous with aluminum storefront hardware, uh, traditional hollow metal and wood door and frame hardware. But their sister company uh, is their automatics. Their automatic uh, sliding, swinging door hardware uh, controllers, motors, operators, all the fit, all the uh, mechanical hardware that goes with all of that in addition to the electronic hardware. If you have any questions on the door controls, DC 30 Signature Series overhead concealed door closers or any other door controls product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.